Welcome to Watch Time uh, in New York 2018. We've arrived in New York. We're so glad all of you guys are joining us today. Of course, uh, the partner of Brian Blue, as always. And behind the camera today is Dave. So he is with us. Dave can give like a little wave if you want or whatever it is in front of him. Hello. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see me today, later. <laughs> it is the complete experience for you guys. We're going to all the brands. We're going to be checking out all the new watches from this past year from all the festivals, of course. Um, what's on the wrist today, Drew? Uh, we got the core map. We just got my friends. It goes along with my Halloween outfit yeah. later on tonight, which you will not be privy to see. But, right. um, and, and guys, for me, it's the Hamilton as always. I'm not going to even show it to you on camera because you guys know what it looks like. But anyways, we're going to do costume filming today. We're right now in the registration area. Um, it's actually very cool to have uh, G-Shock, the new Mr. G, uh, the stainless steel uh, version, and then the history of the company. Very cool. Um, they have a lot of cool watches. Actually, uh, we can start to bring you around to right now. Dave, we can start to go around to the uh, G-Shock over here. Show the G-Shock. I got you. Technology with G-Shock again. G-Shock known for the technology, especially with their digitalization. Um, wow, well, that is amazing. Stuff. But they're known for being rugged, waterproof. And they go pretty much everything. You see a lot of them. And, and a lot of them are any digi. So they have a lot of yep. digital as well. Yep. We haven't really talked about digital watches as much as we'd like to, but um, we're going to talk wow. about that in future episodes. Look at the design on that. Yeah, wow. a lot of different designs. The, the, me, the Actually, bad no, part about G-Shock... We did talk on one of our episodes about how it was uh, originally invented in Korea. Yes, and the bad part about G-Shock is you have to have a large wrist to wear. Yeah, yeah a lot of them are around 43, 44. And that's the smallest. They go up to 48, 50. So you move with these, these were about 44 to 46. Um, these were these were all the hype this year with the uh, complete stainless steel case and the bracelets as well. Uh, normally they're uh, integrated with the rubber uh, straps. These ones have the uh, gold as well as stainless and black. I believe it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's ceramic. I don't think it's PVD. No. Um, but uh, the, get, get a little closer in there, Dave, and, and bring the camera up a little higher so everyone can really see those. Those are the biggest uh, releases this year. Very hard to uh, get your hands on. Well, wow. Unless you have a great ship with an authorized dealer. Yeah, hold on, right? Those um, high-end digitals, wow. But anyways, this is just the entrance. This is just G-Shock. We want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what we're going to see today. Um, you're going to see JJ Le Coult, you're going to see Omega, you're going to see uh, Ka Kari Voulainen, um, who else, uh, MBNF. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great Omega. brands that we're going to see. Yeah. Oh, uh, Grand Seiko as well. Oh, uh, Grand Seiko. Um, so we're going to see you guys in a minute once we start to go into the exhibitors hall. Okay. Let me know when we're on. You're on. So guys, for a dance right now, we'll take a look at uh, one of their pieces right here. I want you to do a nice zoom in. So, uh, I'm uh, here until tomorrow, but I'm staying so, in Los yeah, Angeles. Ah, okay. Certainly an open uh, our face movement right there. It's not a tourbillon. So, tourbillon here, would be uh, spinning and around the dial. Also uh, is, is this is gone. Oh, I know. Theory theory is at all. Oh, you have it. Better yeah. bet yeah. believe that. Okay, yeah, it is. So, um, so yeah. It's actually very it's interesting. Not, it's beautiful. It almost looks like this, a, um, like a, like a president's okay. watch. With Gary coming and animating the image. Absolutely. Well, that's a beautiful the, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the largest it's tourbillon in, in the world. Yeah. This was a great and, and that's obviously a large watch. That looks like it's yeah. around 45, 46 yeah. millimeter. I would say so, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I kind of like the crown design on that, how it's nice and bleeds to the side. It's actually off center, up on the right, the right near the uh, two o'clock. Uh, typically, it's at the three. Uh, really, a beautiful piece. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a nice carrying yeah. piece. Yeah. Very interesting watch. It's the largest, the largest yeah. carry-on in the world. Okay. Yeah. It's, What's the diameter? And then at some point, I would love to talk to you about it. Fifty-two. Yes. Fifty-two. Wow, it's a large one. I had Jessica Davidson. She's one of the What's the size of that one over here? Of this watch over here. Was that 48? This is a specific... Uh, yeah. This is a... Uh, there we go. Yeah, I was trying to get... Here we go. 
Yeah. Hello. This is Terry. I can help Hello. How are you today? Good. How you Hi, doing? Thank you. Excellent. Right. What, what's the diameter on this one? The watch diameter is 49 millimeter. 49. Okay. Uh, and the uh, tourbillon diameter is yes. 27. 27. 27 millimeter. This is the largest tourbillon cage in the world. 27 millimeter. The biggest one before us was a 21 millimeter Giga tourbillon, Frank Miller. Not central, but the biggest central tourbillon was Haldiman, who's 18 millimeter. And it's held up by a single bridge or a dual bridge? So, it's a single bridge. Single bridge. Uh, with 73 components. 1.35 gram weight, but it's heavy. 1.35 is heavy for the watchmaking. So you need a lot of torque. What to do? You cannot use the crown. It will not support the torque. So. Oh, so, so it's three different barrels. Yeah. So we have four barrels in parallel, driven by central planetary gear. And the winding is done from the back of the case. Oh, wow. And, and, and it's a manual wind, correct? Yeah. Just around. Yeah, please. Absolutely. Wow. Just that try is... to wind. Just winding a fact okay. is crazy. That is that is truly... Wow. And what's usually the price point on this one? The price point in titanium, limited to 99, is 165000 165000 that's not a bad price for a uh, yeah. dish piece. For a world record with uh, two patents on it. And, and I gotta tell you, it's also very fine leather on it as well. Yeah, this one is a fake alligator for the yes. customs use. Oh, but yeah. after you have a real Absolutely. alligator. Yeah. And this is the box. Yeah, oh wow, it comes in a suitcase. Yeah. yeah, this is the box. You have all the guarantees. So it comes in the box with the, with the locks and everything. That's fantastic. I, I can tell you, that would be a little large on my wrist little, personally, little but, but still, I, I got to tell you, this, this is a beautiful it piece. It is a piece of history. The, uh, Don't drop it. And, and that, uh, uh, you said 165, correct? Yes. Yeah. That, that's an absolutely absolute wonderful. Piece. Wow. That's amazing. Man. Absolutely amazing. Did, did you want to try it on? Uh, check it on your wrist? My wrist. <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah, try it on, Dave. Dave. Listen. Here, Dave. You have another wrist? Hey, a boy. Exactly. Try it on. Get that sucker on. There you go. Here's a hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars piece. Oh wow! It, it, it would feel good to own, though. <laughs> no, right? Still, huh? Yeah, it would. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Any wow. have you guys sold out of them yet, or no? Uh, we sold have several, but yeah. uh, we have a limited to ninety-nine. Yeah. We sold around eight pieces. That's fantastic. Yeah. And how long have they been out? Uh, early early this year. Oh, okay. Very cool. Cool. Beautiful. 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 Well, beautiful. thank you very much. So I can. Give Look at how heavy yeah, this is. Absolutely. Look at these suckers, yeah. This is amazing. If I hit the lottery, I'm getting it. Oh, boy. We'll keep playing the Mega Millions. You never know. Yes, I know. There's some other pieces, again, by this company. Again, something you can't see anywhere else. No. You look at these pieces, and you're like, absolutely amazing. You cannot find this at any retail store, Macy's. No, absolutely. You can't get it anywhere else. No. Did you want to see any other pieces? As you can see, there's another one over here in the light, so you can get an idea of exactly what it looks like. Absolutely lovely. There we go. Now we take a look at that. Can you hold this in your other hand for me? Uh, hold on. Let me just zoom back out, and we'll be right okay. back with you. Okay. So, guys, with Bavay, I remember when I was reporting from the uh, Watch News. Take a look here. One of the, uh, this is one of the brands that's eligible for the Grand Prix uh, de Haute Palagerie Award uh, for this year. Um, actually, uh, that piece with their uh, Recital 22 Grand Recital. Um, we're going to hopefully get a glimpse into that besides these other watches. Beauvais is known for their Tourbillon um, as well. Um, but yeah, we, I want to check out this uh, piece because this is eligible for the yeah, award this day. year at the uh, Grand Prix. Absolutely lovely over here. Yeah, another exclusive brand that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, but again, you, know, you see you have all the different moon phases surrounded Absolutely. by the globe. Which Unbelievable. Which is very rare to find. Jeez. Yeah, we have to... Um, Some of these people can afford that this. like this. Yeah, well, Absolutely. Well, those are the people that just won the lottery. Well, yeah. And you're millionaires and billionaires. Too. That's right. That's the point of it, though. Yeah, so we're going to come into a... Let's go see some of the old ones over here. 
He's lovely over here. Oh yeah. Absolutely lovely. You can see the tourbillon moving. And there's a pocket watch version of the watch. Very interesting, very interesting. Go over here for a sec. Not many people do that. There's been some main springs. I'm having trouble focusing on this stuff. Oh, there we go. See more designs of Beauvais over there as well. Again, my 1822. Absolutely lovely. And it also has the, uh, you can Whoa. see, Drew, this Back would be a good time one. for you to talk about the po how the pocket watch evolved to the wristwatch. Yeah, you, as you can see, Jared's absolutely right. Pocket watch um, did evolve into the wristwatch. All they basically did, and this again came in World War I for trenches, uh, because the pocket watch wasn't easy to take out of your pants and then see it, they had to have something on their wrist, so they just added a strap. Back then, it would have been a cloth or some type of material, and you could see how they just did that. They just fixated a piece of material onto it, and boom, a pocket watch became a wristwatch, and the rest is history. Uh, this, obviously, is a lot more complicated than the first pocket watch, but you can see how one integrated into the other. So... That is definitely well, we're, Beauvais. We're, we're going to go over here because, again, guys, this is your experience today. We're here. We're we just touched a hundred sixty-five thousand dollar watch. We're going into more things. And it felt we damn want, good. We want you guys to see all the oh, different yeah, watches that we have, especially uh, watches that are up for big awards. So we're going to come in here next. Going to give us a minute. We're going to rotate around the outside, then we're going to go to the inside as well. Actually, the next interesting brand is going to be Google Four Saying. They have one of the most complicated watches in the world. I think their watch went for about a million dollars, I believe. Let's see if we can find it. No, it's all right. I can see it. Yeah, seriously, a million dollars. Oh, yeah. Wow, well, a million dollars. The Dage Mouse. The Dage the Mouse. The Dage the Mouse. The Libya Cycle and the Hour. This is on the small windows at the 12th. Pretty wild. Fine, and you're nice to see the cost of this. You can see another unique, rare for the design. Oh, look at that. Wow. What does this have in it? Is this a triple date? A triple date watch? No, it's more. It's more than that. More. Oh, yeah. Here yeah, you have 15,000 60 seconds flying tourbillon, which symbolize the sun. You have the hearse, which is turning in 24 hours anti clockwise to indicate the hours by the small hour here. Anti-clockwise to respect the reality of the astronomy. So then you have a tiny moon, here spherical uh, moon, which is turning exactly 29.53 days around the Earth to indicate the moon phase. Oh my God. The Earth is painted by hand. The artisan needs three weeks to paint a single one. Then we proceed to apply eight layers of lacquer. We polish it. And the painter paint the clouds. Like that, you have the feeling the clouds float in the air. Right. You have a retrograde minute in this side, nine day for reserve indicator here, nine day with a single barrel, and the date just here. Wow. And when you turn the timepiece, you realize that we drive all the functions by a perpetual calendar. And it's, we use the same disk to display the date both sides. It's a retrograde date, retrograde sapphire date. And then you have the, the day, the month, leap year cycle, and the indication of the hour. Wow. So it's a perpetual calendar. That's all, huh? Wow. How many pieces of these were made? Only 60 movements. We limited our, our collection by the numbers of movements. When we produce 60 movements, it's gone. And I will show you the night vision of the timepiece. Yeah, let's see that. So the, the earth is luminescent, the moon also. Oh, wow. Jeez. That's wild. That's amazing. Uh, 469,000. 000. Wow. Thank you so much. Again, guys, all part of Bavay at the NYC Watch Show. Oh, we got plenty of it, trust me, my friend. You'll be able to see it on the episode of It's About Time.
Yeah, All right, Dave, we'll be back. Jacques Jones, I'm guessing that's how you say it. Hey, Dave, how are you enjoying this so far? I'm loving it. Unbelievable, I isn't it? I'm loving it. We just saw some watch. Oh, wow. It's Another exclusive Swiss watchmaker since 1738. Something, you again, you would never see in the stores unless you came here to NYC Watch Show 2018. Yes. Make some picture. Yeah, these pieces over here. Unbelievable. Hello. What's new out this year? Uh, everything you see here. So these are all uh, Basel pieces that were introduced this year. Uh, okay. Part of our Lady A collection. Uh, these two right here actually is the first time that Jacques Edro has made a diameter of 25 millimeters. Got a little bit more feminine. Um, the top one you see is all mother of pearl. Wow. Uh, complication. So if you rewind it, the flower opens and there's a spinning diamond inside. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can show it for you. How many diamonds Yeah, let me see yeah, how that works. Uh, on the bezel. Uh, 38. 38? Yeah, he's going to show us how this works. Yeah, it is. It's the new Basel collection in 2018 for them. That's why I love the show, because you get to see all the new watches. I got to see this. It's very special. Yeah. Except very for the ladies. Great. Absolutely. Let me take this out. Oh, yeah. Nice gift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how much is this for? This one is 138. Oh, and how many pieces were made? Uh, limited to 28 pieces. Yeah. She's on her side. 38. Okay. So you go. Oh, wow. That is... Oh, wow. I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the restaurant. Yeah, guys, you want me to hold you back? Oh, sure. shit. I think it's this one. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Did you see that, Jared? Why don't you do that again? You guys will be around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be right around here. Get even bigger. Watch this stuff. Are oh, you ready? Yeah. Look at the spinning diamond on yeah, there. Yeah, look at that spins. And the flower goes, oh my god. I think my wife will like that. I'll take one. <laughs> now, 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 I know that I remember reading online. This was one of the rarest pieces that yep. was going to be here today, which is so unbelievable. Cool. That, that's, now, what is this one called? This is the 80, uh, Lady 8 Flower. Lady 8 Flower. Mother of I got a question for you. How'd you get into this industry? To be honest with you, I don't know myself. I just kind of, I've always been into watches, yeah. and you know, once you're in it, it's kind of hard to leave. Kind of absolutely. Around these beautiful watches every day, you know, it's kind of hard. Kind and and, and where, where are you guys headquartered? Well, Josh. we have our Weehawken office. Oh, very so, interesting. And North America, and then we're based on Are you from the area? Yeah, I'm from uh, Jersey. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And I got I, I got to start applying to uh, to some wash places. That's why I'm asking because yeah, that's my number one passion. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And guys, and I happen to agree. Oh yeah. On to our next our next brand over here. Jerry, you want to give me a little right. introduction? Of so, Movable Force, and let me tell you guys a little bit about this brand. This brand features many, many limited edition Torbjorn watches. Um, they actually have a uh, one of their pieces. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a limited edition piece, $1 million, and I believe it is a Grand Sonnery. I believe. Oh, so that is... Uh, actually, I, I, I want to get in here with these guys because this is another very rare piece. Again, guys, they have been around again a long time. And again, none, none of these brands you're going to see, even at Torno or anything like that. Uh, you're only going to see these at watch shows that come around once a year because these are brands that are highly unique, highly collectible, and highly rare, especially you can only find these things in Switzerland. So it really makes sense if you're in the New York area to come down and check a lot of these things out. You get a lot of knowledge and you get a lot of expertise. I'll show you some other ones over here. Take a look at this, another grand complication. we got the world over here. With the... Take a look at that. Take a look at that, baby. I think that may be the grand summary on the right-hand side. Do another uh, little zoom in on that. 
Uh, that may be the piece, I believe. I'm not sure that's a million dollars. And what it does is that it chimes the time. That's what a grand sonnery does. Some of them have petite sonneries, some of them have grand sonneries. Uh, they chime the minutes, hours, um, half hours as well. Um, and what they do is they need a separate power reserve for not only timekeeping, but also for the um, uh, sonnery because it takes up a lot of power. And you can Again, see on the back, the they actually have a mirror over here so you can see the back of the watch. You see that over there? Uh, yes, we have so you can that. see what's on the back of the watch as well. I, I like how we're formatting this year, by the way, by showing them the actual watches this year. Last year we didn't do this as much. Well, we're, we're going into specifics this year on the highly rare pieces that we really didn't focus on last year. So we're really getting into some high-end pieces. Here's the back of this watch over here. That's beautiful. Okay, I just want to show you By the way, that's probably the largest loop in the room behind it. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Chances are. Oh, wow. I know. It's pretty impressive. All these are impressive. Yeah. This one, wow. Like this is blue. one of the most amazing brands in the world if you've had a chance to read up on it. Yeah. It's the most oh. amazing. Not one of yes. them. Yes. Jeez, Jared. Way to insult the guy. Watch collector. This is my second career. And I have really? involvement in many of the watch brands. Yeah. And this is the most, this is the pinnacle of watch brands. This is, yeah. is this the uh, Grand Sonnery? No, that, that is the Grand Sonnery okay. we have in our office. I just okay. want to bring it here. It's a live piece. Which is understandable. It's 1.2 million. <laughs> 1.2 million. 1.2 million. Inflation. Wow, it's so good. The Grand Sonnery. Oh. And this beautiful house. So just pull out your wallet and get that one. That is the new GMT Earth. Oh, GMT Earth. GMT Earth. That we just said. And you have Right. Which I just showed them. And this one? That's a uh, double bounce. Yeah. That's the double bounce. So you see both of them. The <laughs> I'll tell you, this is like a rail watch. Hands down. Rail. I mean, when you go places, people will notice. So the coolest, I have seven of them in my personal collection. The coolest thing about them is that if you know, you know, and if you don't, oh. Just they're very. I, I mean, this is a little bit out there, but otherwise they're very like something like this. You could wear this. It's very clean. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you, it's worth every dollar of that. Every dollar. That's a nice two watch. I want to see the other thing. Yeah. Get that one. The other, and by the way, even on the blue one, the other thing about the brand is most of what you see, top and bottom, is no dial component. So on this watch, for example, the only dial is the little rim around the edge. Mm -hmm. The rest of this is all movement plates. Yeah. And, the, and the frosted finish is much more difficult for the watchmakers to do uh, than a cartagenaire. It may not look as impressive, the finish, but it's much more difficult to accomplish and there's no room for error. So if you look at something that has a coat to Genève, if the, if the watchmaker is putting the place together and scratch or something, they can re they can re that. Yeah, there is no room for error. Yeah, the frosted, this one's got the frosted This has frosted and, inside. And, and I've talked to their the ground belt, they tell me how hard it is to do. I actually awesome. bought their last two hammer dials. I, I saw yeah, Steve had one. Oh my God. Yeah, I have sold them. Let's see if I'm right. And I sold one to a private company. I have a question for you. Is that your work? Yes. Was I right? All right. <laughs> Pretty distinctive. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. I had to ask that wow. question. <laughs> yeah, take please, it. absolutely. Thank you. Wow. It's just such a unique piece. How long have you had it for? Uh, about a year. Uh, a, lot, a lot of heft to it, too. Yeah, okay. this thing is like a weapon. So I actually... Yeah. I went to the cool. first 202 ever that came into America. Yeah. That's so cool. cool. As we move on to the next spot, we go. Last suit, another very big popular brand. Uh, they're um, they're almost similar to a uh, Breitling. Uh, okay, yeah. They remind no, no, they remind me of Alanga and Sony. Yeah, very much like Alanga. They feature a lot of distinct moon phase powers or big dates as well. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, they all come on um, beautiful straps, of course. They're very simple. Um, this brand you do see in a couple of high retail end stores, though. Yes, absolutely. I know we've seen this at the Short Hills Mall. You uh, do see this brand featured more it, than these other It brands. is in Tourbillon, in the yeah. Short Hills Mall, absolutely. Yep. Uh, the piece right up there is the uh, Triple Eight. Yep. The calendar. 
Yep. So this is a little bit more mainstream than the re- the rest Absolutely. of the elite brands. Now the they're known the for there. their uh, glass suit senator, the original. And that you can see is, that over uh, there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, you guys can see the beautiful watchmaking station here. And by the way, this is better than being in the watch store today. No offense. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Just a bit. This is uh, a little it's more exciting. Beautiful as you can get. You can see all the inner work of cars. And, uh, Look at this. Oh my God. Absolutely. You can even Very see, nice. too, the, um, the uh, inner working of this moving in the back. Um, so now this one, I believe, um, is this the Senator? Uh, no? This is our Senator Cosmo. Oh, it is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a Sorry, beautiful, this, beautiful this piece. Just a yeah. Absolutely. Wow. So, so, so you guys can tell I know my watches pretty well. He is fa- fa- fairly decent. Yeah. expert on the knowledge of the brand. And all of the pieces... Yeah, these are all the little screws. I would not touch those if yeah, I were you, by the way. These are very delicate. Yes, you can't get oils from them. Yes, I'm not. Okay. Hey. Moving on to our next brand As over we here that we have. Skip out the lawn. Absolutely. Oh, uh, Kyle. Uh, 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 it's very interesting over here. One of the best independent uh, watchmakers in the world. Very interesting. So we're gonna do a little filming over here again. We're gonna go on the outside, then we're gonna go to the inside. And you're gonna see more of the um, uh, well-known brands. The outside is more of the independents. The inside you're gonna see uh, the Mont Blanc. You're gonna have um, your Omega. You're gonna have um, the you know, Chrono like Swish. That. You're gonna have more Chronos, of those types. Uh, Chronos, of, yeah, we haven't hit them yet. Nope. Absolutely, but they're known for their big brand. Brand Seiko. You'll have yeah, all those types of brands. Everybody knows and loves. But we're still right now on the independents and the rare elite brands that you just don't see anywhere else. And this is the beauty of these brands. Nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Uh, Let's take a look. Absolutely. What does this one usually retail for? I can't even get a good view on that. uh, A lot of the watches I know are um, very limited edition pieces. They're all made by hand with uh, Caribou and Lion. He's one of the best independent watchmakers in the world from Switzerland. Um, absolutely beautiful piece. Uh, you guys can see the beautiful uh, you know, uh, blue leather here, which is kind of rare. You don't see that on every watch. Um, you guys can see the uh, small seconds. Of course, we talked in past videos about some of the watch complications. Right. And you can see the brigade style hands. Just absolutely beautiful. Uh, very easy to read with the light dial and this gold chain. A lot of watches these days do not have sub-dials. No. It's no, a very no, old no, design. No, but, but you can see how smooth this particular watch is. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and again, it's a very wearable uh, case size. Um, it looks like a 42. Um, yeah, it's probably around a 40, 42, give or take. It's definitely larger than the corm that you have on now. But the corm's a 40, so I guess that's a 40. It's almost like a honeycomb dial, reminds me of the Omega yep. a little bit. It's quite stiffy. Absolutely. Uh, it's you know, just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful piece from another beautiful brand. And then as we move along, we have Fiona Kruger, as Jared will explain exactly what this up and coming watch brand does have to offer this show and the world this year. Uh, looks like a little bit more outside the box thinking from this brand. This actually goes with a Halloween theme if you really think about it. Okay, you can see the intricacies based upon the skull. And actually, if you think of Freddy Krueger and Fiona Krueger, it actually goes with the Halloween theme as well. So, nice little uh, independent watch brand that you don't hear of, again, at the show, 2018 watch show in New York City. All right. So, guys, uh, we're here at uh, Fiona Krueger, one of the uh, best upcoming also independent uh, watch makers, as we are uh, background in Art Deco. It's very cool, as you can see, a lot of the watches are art inspired. You can see they feature um, a lot of the um, uh, art and the uh, skeleton uh, designs, which is very cool. And, uh, you know, again, the most lines are uh, uh, the pocket watch kind of design with the crown and the, uh, the top. Um, you know, they all feature some uh, leather, but they also feature some uh, you know, comfortable leather and straps. And the range of these usually go anywhere between ten and 15000 below one, what I'm hearing. Yeah, you know, I'll say even a 20, but you also have to remember that a lot of these pieces are made by hand, so they're not 
worked on the impact like Omega is. You guys can see in the book too the, the designs. It takes a long time to develop the design for the watch. So, you know, a lot of these are custom. You're telling them what you want to make and they make it for they you. They are absolutely. It's the custom. new type of watchmaking that's available these days that just wasn't available 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely, but it's and also bringing a new audience into the watch world, which is something that we need uh, very heavily. Uh, but you know, the quality on these pieces, you know, fantastic. And, but, but it really uh, brings into the design because, again, you see Oris, you see Ryder, you see Omega. So you see something like this, you don't see watches designed like this every day. Absolutely. Which is very cool. Cool. This is away. This watch right here, these are known for their exquisite colors. This one in particular right here, again, up for several Grand Prix de Holazori Awards. Uh, this one is honestly absolutely ridiculous. I don't remember the name on it. But this is one of the brands that, again, will cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy. It will be probably in the tens of thousands of dollars to produce, and without a doubt, are all limited edition pieces. Of course, they're all uh, manual wine. None of these are automatic pieces. What watch do I have that kind of looks like that? Ah, I wonder. It must be the Epos. It has to be the Epos triple date. It must be the Epos. I have to tell you, though, I do, I, I do prefer your watch over this one. I do, too, based on how it's designed. Um, but, you know, again, a lot of these watches that were seeing right now uh, and then that's that's the one that we're seeing right over here uh, we're gonna get a close-up of this one in the flesh actually uh, just a minute or so but um, but as you guys can see there's a lot of people here that have very vast collections here and it's so cool uh, throughout the day I know Drew's been taking the camera a little bit I've been interacting with a lot of the watch collectors a lot of the watch fans a lot of independent brands to see what's new for this year and to see kind of what the style of the taste where the industry is going this is my, the reason, I'm going to tell you guys this why I love coming here. You guys, you guys can see me being dressed up tonight. I want to interact with the industry titans, find out how to get into the industry. As you know, I already questioned someone who's got to us about. Uh, they actually have headquarters in New Jersey. I may try to... Absolutely. Hey, you learn things like that. Um, you know, I'm going to question everything. This is my number one passion in life. Thanks to the guy behind the camera. So we're going to get it. Uh, I actually want uh, Dave to put this next one. Or actually, Drew, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera. Drew's going to put this one on his wrist. It's going to give me a little chance to give him a little camera time for some of the watches. Just a second. All right, we're good. Look at this. All right, so Drew's going to be trying on uh, one of the pieces here. Oh, my God. Look at that. Okay, we'll try this one. Yeah. Drew, this the long? Yeah. Okay, I think I'll make sure he does not drop it, of course. Yeah, it wouldn't it's be number good. one. No. Right. How's it feel on the wrist? Nice. And how are you guys today? Oh, very well. Excellent. I'm trying to read without my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Always a challenge. And what's the one I have on my wrist right now? This is the Story of Arias. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, first 42 millimeter uh, case we've done, and titanium. Titanium, huh? Titanium, right? Polished titanium. Yeah. Uh, the dial is titanium as well, but heated to, to fluorescent blue. And uh, we had a, a, a Milky Way uh, pattern to it. Which is, uh, we were just talking, I have an Epos uh, oh, yeah. triple date um, moon phase that has, it's called the night sky. Uh, so it looks very similar to this. this. Is, mm -hmm. And um, we're seeing a lot of different night sky watches come out now. So we've come, we've originally were coming out with the, the starry sky, yep. which is here, a more jeweled up. And um, <laughs> well, that's okay. So we have uh, four different sets of uh, white gold so, beads that, that are or rivets, yeah, you like, set into there. Yeah. And then we have a three-dimensional moon phase that fits through that hole. Half platinum, half steel, blue steel. I can take. I like the fact that it's coming out with titanium because, as with my best friend, a lot of people, not even that, a lot of people have allergies to metal. If you notice, a lot of people have allergies to stainless steel. So when you do titanium, that's not the case. Exactly. All of a sudden, you don't have the allergy problem anymore. And yeah. um, so that is a very interesting so design. Uh, that, I, I love that nice blue. Yeah, I know. Like that, I know. It's, it's very hard to develop. It's very hard yeah, to it develop. It has to be the right temperature, right amount right. of time. It's beautiful. Uh, wow. So what they did with that one... Was, I like the fact that they put them on the slant, which is really cool, because most triple dates, as you know, they have them. So, yeah, it is a, a different little design that they did. But it, most people have a flat moon phase, which is normal. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're known for having a three-dimensional. I like the 3D. Oh, wow, yeah, I love that. It pretty cool. And it's working. It's actually the, 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 the 28 days. Wow. Probably, I'm... 
That's just, beautiful. What are these so usually retail for? Yeah, uh, this, I, I'm still this way, and uh, white gold is uh, seventy. The gold is uh, seventy-seven thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. But this is sixty-six thousand, and they titanium. And are they exactly. coming out with any triple so dates this, this version in the future? We have a plenty of perpetual, but we don't do yeah. triple They don't do it with the night sky. Yeah, we take a look at the perpetual right here. We do a lot of I just noticed that a little bit. Oh, wow. Look at these. Wow. Really cool. Everything is so unique. It's like looking at one piece of art after another. Right, exactly. I agree. Just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us about some of the pieces that we have here. Okay, so very interesting. We have the, here the regulator. Oh, oh regulator. Yeah. Uh, I love regulators. With the handmade dial with the crunch stone. How many minutes? Yeah. Here you have oh, the hammer uh, like with a hand hammering now. It's a prototype, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, it's very cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Any plans to release it? It's very yeah. wearable. Yeah? Very, yeah. very wearable. Good. I think this is a bigger case. This, uh, just chunkier. before we came to the show, yeah, so it's weird. You get that yeah. Yeah. Now, um, how... The new sapphires that they start working with their supply for oh, sapphires. Okay. How, how often does it take uh, to make the like, full rotation on the uh, like the first time you showed us right now, it's like perfect. I didn't even think that. He's going to touch the movement, you know? I'm like. <laughs> Rajab, How are you? Hello. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. I've read so much about you. It's a pleasure to meet you, by the way, in person. Yeah, you're one of the youngest uh, independent watchmakers out there. 33, correct? 31. Oh, 31. She's younger than you. I am. So, yeah, I, I was going to say I'm 33. That, that's incredible. <laughs> you are doing incredible things. I just want to commend you on that. Absolutely. Can you ask about the, um, the, no, the uh, Yeah, how, how often does it make a full rotation? La Hotesu. Oh, yeah. Ah, um, the revolution of this turbine is in one minute. One minute, oh, seconds. excellent, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful pieces. That one that here. Um, they represent our knowledge, you know, it's hand hammering. I mean, what they're yeah, doing. Absolutely. And like it's a Giyoshi, what we make with a Tour Septante, showing Tour Septante. So, so, what are these usually retail for? The retail for the turbine, this yeah. turbine. We are at 124,000. Yeah. 124, yeah. Therefore, Swiss yeah. Swiss yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I was just reading up on it. They just came out with the uh, up and down the uh, movement. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Oh, wait, thank, thank you so much. Uh, so many of us here. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Going off the RGM car watch company now. Okay, if you take a look. You know me, I'm going to get in here and interact with these guys. No problem, I can't help it. I like to ask the questions. What uh, do you know about RGM, buddy? Now we're at RGM. This is a company based in uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, local. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's actually the owner of the company right over there. Our jacket, very nice guy. Uh, we had a chance to interact with him. Yes, we did. Correct. Absolutely. So all the, uh, a lot of these watches, again, uh, they're handmade, they're hand-machined, a lot of CNC uh, going on. Not every brand has their own CNC machines. Uh, they're very expensive and they're very uh, detailed. It's like molds for anything that you're going to produce. But it's, it's nice and refreshing to see a, an American watch company. Absolutely. You so now, often see the Swiss. Now a lot of these... This reminds me a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, Balmercier or uh, ha uh, Hamilton with the uh, railroad pieces, uh, a lot of pocket watches that they make. Now you can see the CNC detailing on this gold plate right here. That's very difficult for most um, watchmans to do, they don't do that. The reason why they, um, they're they very difficult is first of all, it's hard to get the machines, then you have to get the molds for them, but it also takes a skilled person on a CNC machine to cut them all out of the metal plates. Kind of similar to what Drew does, with his industry. Right. It's very similar. So, you know, as you guys can see, the Côte de Genève uh, on the back uh, case, very detailed uh, stripe on the uh, case back. Um, you know, and again, a lot of times that you will see with the independent brands, I want to bring the attention to the gold watch in the back, is you are going to see the open heart, the tourbillon designs, um, you know, designed for making watchmaking more accurate. And, of course, as you can see, you know, I, I, I mentioned with the uh, Côte de Genève and the Guilloche, is also enamel. The reason why watches have enamel dials is because they're going to age a lot better and they're going to last a lot longer. It's going to cost a lot more money, but at the end of the day, you don't get the patina with the enamel that you do on regular dials. Here, Here we go. Jared, 
Tell me a little bit about this brand. Guys, welcome to uh, JobTech. It's another uh, independent brand. Um, you know, they're, they're known for not only turbulence, but then they also do, which you haven't seen at some of the other brands, chronograph movements. And they're also known for their different um, uh, case styles and materials, and we're going to ask more about that in a second. As we can see some of the offerings of the 2018 collection over here. Yes, look up on this new website, right? So they're also known for their elaborate colors, which is very cool. I know Drew loves his red. With the, uh, I do like my red. Special in his concord. So, how are you guys? Hi, how are you? Excellent. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I think... Yeah. What are the retail prices on some of these? I'm basking in the glory. I don't care what the weather is outside. I told everyone we're going to be 85 yeah. degrees. So we'll, do, we'll do whatever you want. It's a small company. That's a great mindset. We make 200, 250 watches a year. Which one is your favorite? You tell us what you want. I actually, believe it or not, I do like the red on this. The red one, yeah. Uh, that is literally red. I would say that's been the most popular. Is the case size on this 35? 38 Yeah. Really? Nice size. Yeah. Nice it's really comfortable. I never... Yeah, yeah. This is actually a 38 also, which is so weird. Yeah. It's because like, you have the, yeah, yeah, uh, the crown, crown factor protector. comes out exactly. in it. That is it tricks you. What do these usually retail for? Uh, this is 50 to 6. Uh, we start at like about 12 and go over 100. So. Um, now, do you guys have that one in the middle here or not? Yes. Yeah. Is that for our third GPHG? I was going to say the Grand Prix that has yeah. the Rosary of where I trust This is a brand new movement that uh, No Shades has, but I think Parmesan. Take a look at that. Uh, Absolutely beautiful. There's really not and a lot of people. It's a Terra Gold Rotor. And Jared knows where I'm going. It's a Terra Gold Rotor. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I can't. Pet peeve of mine. Why no steel strap? Why no steel strap? But we yeah, just haven't year. moved. This is only our third year, okay. so yeah. we're, and, and we're slowly adding on. You know, we can't go too fast. We don't want to collapse. Cool. But I have to tell you though, and, and I will of course just say this because I'm not the biggest fan of leather. But this rubber too, very lightweight. Uh, yeah. You can take this around almost, you know, uh, any kind of elements. It's going to hold up over time. Yeah. And look at this too. If you want to dress it up, it's yeah. actually this a yeah. taco strap on there. It's Absolutely. actually a special coating. Um, it's called like well, thank you, everybody. CSHL. It's a diamond uh, coating. Yes. We'll just show you a little bit more of their offerings over here before we move on to the next brand as well. Again, they've been around for three years. And brand new company really to the industry, trying to make their mark on the world. If everybody's wondering why Jared's doing a lot of the talking today with these watch brands, it's because he studies this 24 hours a day. I don't think he sleeps uh, with a lot of these independent watch brands. So he knows a lot of information and facts about them. Uh, I know more about the common watch brands that you would particularly know uh, that we're going to be getting into very, very shortly. This is a brand I have to be honest with. I have no idea. This is a first. Everybody stop the video. <laughs> this is a first watch brand. Jared has no idea what the hell he's going to talk I about here. I actually don't know. Um, actually, I was just talking with them about the uh, uh, hand uh, This is a brand, actually, I want to learn more about, so we're going to stay here for a minute. Uh, actually, after this brand, what we're going to do is we're going to go to, um, we're going to finish going around on the outside. We're going to take a pause, go to lunch, we're going to come back, and then we're going to bring you guys the things that you're going to want to see with all, you know the, all the brands that you guys know. We're actually going to do one more brand before we go. I'm going to do Bremont because I actually have a lot of knowledge on Bremont from Bermuda. I'll, I'll let you do that one. we got to do, the, we gotta do the whole Then we'll do, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah we'll do the rest of the outside so for you. I'm actually going to have Drew film this one. I'm going to call this one. I'm going to ask what the questions on right this now. particular brand so we can find out a lot more. Um, that is true. Yeah, yeah, just zoom out a little bit and just pause it. That has to be the nicest watch I've tried on today. I've tried on a lot of watches. That is spectacular. Wow, look at that. And so many. It's a nice triple name. It's actually beautiful. The customers was. Oh, wow. Because before I made it. Yeah, Jerry, sure. do you want to get back? I spoke about my project to make a square one. Yes. And uh, so many people spoke carefully. Watch, well, that's some good advertising. Very hard. Again, we know nothing about this brand. People are going to learn right now. Drew is going to find out some stuff and we're going to ask some questions for sure. So, Drew, whenever you are ready. 
ready, I'm going to let you take the show. That's the entire For once. movement. <laughs> now, do you find that there's any loss of stability when it's mm-hmm. that? Because usually the three-quarter plate makes it seem to be How do you want your, you know, in terms like of performance? Where do you, how do you regulate Yeah, give or take. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, 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 ye
Thank, Thank you. you so much. Appreciate it. Man. Have a great day. Okay, here so we go. Guys, we're here uh, here's Bell one you've been owing. Now, Bella let me just tell you guys just a little bit because now, as you guys can see, the Hamilton that I wear is a little similar to some of the styles that you can see with, with Bell and Ross with a World War II kind of vintage military feel. Um, they have a lot of also, uh, sa they have one watch that's a particular sapphire, very rare in the world. They're known for their, uh, you know, their square you know, case, of course, but they also do round and some chronographs. As you guys can see, the other thing that's coming back a little bit, it's the date between 4 and 5 o'clock, which is exactly what that watch has. If Drew can zoom in on that one over there, I just want to show you guys. That's becoming very popular and commonplace because they want to make room on the dials for other complications. Exactly. So there's a chronograph gives you more room day over there. and date. Oh, this is my favorite look at some Bell and Ross piece here. Thank you. My favorite one with the blue. Me too. <laughs> I, I actually have to tell you, this is um, this me. is a nicer blue in person. Now, I, before when I worked in retail, we actually sold this one, but it looks so much better now than it did when I was. Uh, this is, uh, and I know this is the new piece from this past year from Basel. Well, actually, most of the pieces here are. They are new. Wow. They have their classic circle in the square design that they have not left. But you can see they also offer a couple of just round pieces without the square design that they are patented and known. It's got the unidirectional rotating bezel, correct? That's a beautiful one. Can you just hold my stuff in there? So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Bell and Ross. So this is the second the 2018 Grand Watch. Real out. quickly, as we. That is. Cool. I gotta tell you, that is cool. But when you try it on right now. So this is the brand new one that came out. I just read about it uh, a couple weeks ago. This is the ACDC. It's a limited edition piece, right? That's correct. Yeah, limited edition piece. Uh, yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. It'd be nice the, if I like more than two of their songs, but yeah. I gotta tell you, you know, these watches fit the rest so much better I mean, when you're in person. That's what they have know, available yeah, this year, as really you can see. Like and you guys, Jared was just saying, the ACDC collection. If you're a fan of ACDC, yeah, they have made a, a um, tribute to them by a lot, had a lot of designing so a couple watches in their honor. Oh, yeah. Look at that one, the gold. Take a look at DeMonaco over here. DeMonaco, you see at this at this watch show a lot. They're known for, again, painted, hand-painted dials on uh, the watch and unique designs. So if you take a look, we'll take a look at their 2018 collection over here. How are you? Very good. And you? Very good. What's new out this year? New out this year. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. It's great meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have some some new chronographs. Some new chronos, yes, with uh, forged carbon and 18 karat gold on the on the dials. Very interesting. And what do these usually retail for? The the new ones out this year. So yeah, this ones uh, start at uh, fourteen thousand four hundred mm -hmm. with the the forged carbon with the with the gold inside. And then this one is uh, with the sapphire dial. It's a little bit less expensive. It's uh, twelve thousand five hundred. Interesting. How long has this brand been around for? Uh, we exist since two thousand eight. So that's nice. so uh, relatively new in the. Yeah, in the if you industry. look at watchmaker terms, it's quite quite young. <laughs> quite young, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So this actually is uh, the one in rose gold mm -hmm. with uh, the the forged carbon and. We put bursts of gold inside. Interesting. And that means that when you put under pressure to make it one block, actually the, the forged carbon, uh, 2,000 bars of pressure. But before putting the pressure on, actually those bursts of gold, we mix, mix it with the resin and with the carbon fiber. And when we put on the pressure, it actually melts, the gold melts, and it will mix and spread out randomly inside the, the carbon fiber. Oh, very interesting. I also have one uh, tourbillon on my wrist, which has the same material inside, but made uh, the case actually we made of this material. Cool. Wow. It, it has a sapphire bridge. I'm really going to enjoy selling 
Very cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, let's venture on a Chrono Swiss. This is an interesting brand. I have thought about buying a handful of times. Um, Dave, what do you know about Chrono Swiss? Anything? Nothing. No. no. Well, they're actually known for um, regulators, which is what you have on your wrist. What's on your wrist today? We didn't even get to Dave's what's on his wrist. Dave, show us what's on the wrist. And it is the Good Oris. Old Oris. But it is the Oris regulator, uh, which he has worn so much. And I haven't pulled out the Rado yet. Absolutely. But um, the Chrono Swiss is known for their regulators as well. They're just at a higher expensive level. Um, let's see if we can get to their, it's probably their latest 2018 collection. Okay, and these look like pilot's watches from Chrono Swiss. And if you could take a look, we can get into some of their other watches over here. And you can take a look at some of their other collections over here as well. But you do see, again, they're known for their regulators and jump hours. That's the one thing I was missing over there before. I do love their jump hours. Um, Chrono Swiss, along with other companies like Omega, like uh, Oris, uh, does do a variety of, of jump hours. But this is one in the industry. They haven't been around that long. Again, no, 10, 20 years they've been around. And um, just the one thing that always annoyed me about that is, number one, they are a little more expensive than everybody else. Uh, and they do not offer a date on their jump hours. But again, this is Chrono Swiss. A uh, very unique company with a very unique design. The independent watchmaker segment that we're doing. This is their collection of 2018. Very unique. Is this your typical pilot's design over here? The, the Four Countess is a patent of a brand. So we are the only brand who has uh, the Four Countess in a row like this. Interesting. Wow. Reminds you of like the World War One, World War Two, the gauges on the planes, where they had the four count on the planes. I didn't understand. It reminds you of the the World War One, World War Two, the fighter planes. Huh. No, this, uh, this I I don't know. We we took it from the dashboards. Right. So, but probably it's the same thing. Yeah, same thing on the planes. That's yeah. what I, I was saying. Um, very unique. You said you're the only ones that do this with the four? Yep. What do these usually retail for? We go from 6,500 6, to, to 9,800, uh, depending on the size. So we have also the 40 millimeters that is not here, the 42, 43, and 46. Wow. So you got a lot of chronographs on these. And... Um, you guys have been around since when? This is an old brand, right? 1887. You don't no, no interruption. Family yeah. company. Wow. Always on the market. You don't see. I, I just don't see this brand around a lot. I guess you see it a lot in Switzerland and stuff like that. But in Europe, is Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Germany. We are there. In, in the U.S., we are restarting the distribution. Yeah, it's good. good. Were you guys here last year? No. Yeah, I didn't remember seeing you here last year. That's what I was like. This is an interesting little brand in itself. You just see the rest of these over here, Dave, for a minute. It's like crap. That's the Oscars, I guess. They're new to the... To, they weren't here last year. Everhard, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was talking to uh, the other gentleman from the watch from the uh, Tell me a little bit about the watches that you guys have and things like that. So I'm not, I'm not as familiar with the brand. We've historically have been producing chronographs in particular, main watches and chronographs in particular. Uh, so I would say 60% of our production are chronographs today, 10% is ladies with this collection. And then we have some other watches, some other specialties like the 8 days power reserve, that is a patent. That is a patent. Or, for example, the, the scaphograph, that is a diving watch. The heritage of the past, we've been re-proposing the watch, and uh, we won the Grand Prix of Algeria in 
2016 with this watch. Now, by the way, this one is one of the most unique ones. Are these all the chronograph dials on the center, and then they go? Yeah, this is their patented design with four chronograph that dials. That is so cool. We were talking about before how it lends to the fact of the airline pilots in World yeah. War One, World War Two had the four dials on the planes. And it's easier to read that way. Too. And racing cars do have the same type of thing too. So yeah, you can take that that design off a lot of different things. That and that's very cool. Now, what's the retail price on this? We go from 6500 to 1900 depending on the size. So they, uh, they do have their affordable, affordable pieces. Segment. Yep, they do indeed. Oh, my God, the color is amazing. You do have the blue color here. Okay, this is kind of like my Cartier, which does have the sunburst dial. Okay, it's called a sunburst blue dial. This is a darker navy blue, more like the Rolex than the Cartier. Um, you do have the sunburst navy blue dial over here. It does have that Rolex Submariner design. It's very thick, though. Can I see the thickness on the side? It's a very, very thick. You do have a rubber strap here. Okay, so I'm sure it does have a screw-down crown. Okay, Bremonts are known for this type of thing. Again, these are all um, pilot's watches. Okay, pretty much aviators. You can see over here, based upon the aviation, when you have two sub-dials on the side, that, again, comes directly from the pilot's. Breitling does this a lot, uh, especially with the roller watches, the vintage watches, because they were, again, pilot's watches. So you can see a lot of aviation in the green line. Which one's your favorite here? Let's see it on your wrist. I'll try it. You know, hold on, let me take a seat. What one's my favorite? Yeah. Actually, let's let me try this one over here. Let's see it. Probably a 42 mm I'm actually not. Sorry. Really? Do you like the simplistic design? Again, large. A little bit. 42, this looks like they have a carbon fiber dial, okay, which is unique because, again, it is uh, good for allergies. If you're allergic to stainless steel, uh, you can go both titanium or you can go carbon fiber. How's it feel on your wrist? Oh, uh, nice. You know, you know me, I don't like uh, leather straps, so I can't really give you an accurate... Where's the little smaller but there you go. You got the Bremont. This is nice. If you look at the road, you come in here. Take a look. It's got Bremont between every lug, which is, which is uh, there. See that? Which is a nice little feature on those as well. So you can see um, most of them. Is this 5 ATM, 10 ATM? I would say that's 5. No, 10. There's your 10 up there. So most of them are 10 ATM. You can go swimming with them. They do have that feature as well. So again, guys, that is Bremont. They are thick, though. Nice. Uh, they are a thicker watch, but they're known for aviation. And go. All right, guys. Welcome to um, a brand that I personally actually did a video on that was very popular. You guys can see on here, and I want to uh, actually put this one on my wrist. I did the uh, somewhat of the review, kind of a little bit of the Val Mercier Jimmy Bomatic. This just came out this year. Yep, popular one by you. It's a five-day chronometer. One of the most popular videos that we have right now on our site. Um, as you guys can see, service life is greater than five years, which beats the industry standard. Yes. Is your anti-magnetic uh, launches, or actually? Yeah. One of those is not it, but uh, again, from the clip to collection, uh, mine's four to plus six seconds per day, so you're at um, um, your standard, so you're going to see. I try and... Uh, Take a look at some of the collection over here from Bomb and Mercier. Again, Jared Ed does have a history with this brand. His father uh, had them as well. But we can take a look at what they have to offer. This, see if Jared can get this on his wrist. There we go. So, guys, thank you. How are you? So, this is the Bomatic. This is the Bomatic. This is the star of the show. Yeah, this is. Thank you. So I, I, I try this one. Yeah, and this, and this is one of the biggest hit, in my opinion, at a bottom of this year. This is a nice brand. I'm wearing so many nice sounds. Interesting about Mom Mercedes. You can get them for anywhere between. There are more expensive. Um, you can get them under a brand. Um, yes. So we have five styles. And even with the vintage, there you go. 
So there's five styles. The one you're wearing is obviously the black strap, and this is the cost certified, so you see that it has that cross kind of signaling that, Absolutely. whereas these are just the basic white dyes. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so that's interesting. Yeah, so they all house the same exact movement, but it's a 15-day process to get something certified, so we've done just one style yeah, that goes through that. Absolutely. Um, you can see what the advertise over here is, what Jared was talking about. Okay, they have power reserve, they have the accuracy, they have the anti-magnetic, at least 1,500 gauss, and durability service up to five years. And your accuracy is plus four, minus four plus six per day, which is your chronometer standard, and you got 120 hours of power reserve, which is five days. Again, this is Bomb and Mercier, one of the oldest brands in the industry. As we see Dave once again, moving on to the next brand. There we go. Okay, here is Blanc. Let's see what they have new for this year. Oh, that's pretty. I didn't win Dave, take, um, you know what? All right, you're, you're still busy with that. Yeah, I was going to have you film a bit because I took a look at a couple. Yeah, you're pretty busy with that. Thank you very much. I like that. What is new for this year? Most everything in the case. Huh. Can I see this one? Do you like the design of that? Yeah. Very old brand, reputable history. So the layout has that asymmetrical. Yeah, I do like the. And what? And what's the water resistance on that one? Um, 100 meters, which is 10 ATM. Yeah. yeah. It was just a very. Absolutely fantastic article. What was the model on that one? Just done yesterday. By this, one? This, one? this one is the 55. Let's see this one. There. What he did with uh, this brand. But this one is a Titanium Casing Sword. They've had some good articles lately. Yeah. Fantastic article. How he just came in. I'm going to hear take this. I'm going to try this on for the viewers. Yeah, yeah. this is something. He had vision. Absolutely. So, right now, Mr. Pizzolo is trying to argue with Bauman Mustia. What's the uh, price on this one? Which one is the time go for? Uh, it's a prototype, so I don't even know. Oh, it's Which a prototype. One oh, that's the big day. Is that a power reserve big day? That's the, that no, that's the day of the week. Oh, the day of the week. This okay. one is uh, 16 You do have the big date on there. I like, I do like the bracelet. If you take a look, oh, the uh, it's a yeah. mesh, but it's really not. Look at all of the unique designs, brand. 16 on the bracelets. Watches. It's a mesh, but it's not, because it's got the screws as well, which is very interesting. I know he loves I mean, Brigade. This, besides Vacheron, one of the more uh, oldest <laughs> watch manufacturers in the world, um, Anton Louis Brigade uh, patented designs in his day that today still stand. So figure from 1775 to uh, 2018. Um, they're known for their class of watches, really mainly uh, two-hand, mainly some three-hand, uh, a lot of... Um, Actually, this one right here is beautiful with the enamel dial. Um, I you're not gonna... I'm going to try and look at these ones. Oh, 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 oh. oh we're going to get that. I want to know which one you want to try and I want to see. All right, guys. Here we are back with Breguet again. Here's some of the most complicated movements that Breguet has to offer. And that they run quite a pretty penny. It's beautiful over here. I have no idea what the heck this is. But I assume nobody's going to wear that on their wrist. But it is quite interesting. All right, let's see what Dave has chosen for his watch that he wants to choose. Dave has chosen. Three different models to launch the design. That's the three hand. We have the chronograph and we have the alarm. Each one comes in three metals: white gold, rose gold, or titanium. Well, with these. Okay, let me this for you. It's a killer watch. Wow. I love that watch. How much is this? They're getting that ready. You can see this is pretty cool. I want to show you this. You get it yet? With your next photo? Right and here we go. How much does it retail for? This one is, and I'll just put the dial. It's not on my finger hand. 30 and change. And the rose gold. It's only a two hundred thirty thousand dollars piece. Day. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! All right. Well, that's 
Let's walk out with that one. Let's see how far you get it. <laughs> you feel like a quarter of a million bucks. Oh, this is only a 20 though. Twenty-eight thousand. Uh, around twenty-eight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a fun place. Very nice. Listen, we're going to check up today. Don't worry. About it. Uh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zizinagut. One of my favorite pet brands, as we all know. I've had a long history with them. It was oh, the well, first watch, watch I ever received from my father, by the way. And I still have it today. Wow. Uh, let's go see what they have to offer. Let's I go. I think Drew's going to try it. Oh, I have to. I'm surprised you didn't wear your dear manicure. It doesn't go with my Halloween outfit. Uh, yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Oh. This is a watchmaker. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's take a look at that. I always find this fascinating. No, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I always find this fascinating. The hand-eye coordination. Um, it's, it's everything coordination. Take a look at some of what JLC has to offer this year. Again, they have the classic Reverso. Okay, that's what they're known for. Uh, Reverso is their bread and butter of their watch lines. I happen to love the craftsmanship of JLC. Yeah, I know. It is unbelievable. Take a picture. So as you can see, which one are we going to try now? You know, we, we all know the, um... I can try on a reverse but that's a reverse Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, oh, oh. yeah. yeah. the metal box. 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 The metal The metal box. The metal box. The that was actually pretty good. From the 70s. From the 70s? You guys are going vintage now. Huh? Well, these are all vintage pieces. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. They're all vintage. Yeah, this is the new guy. Ah, interesting. Mm. That's the new dial over there. Yeah, the new Polaris Memo Box. Wow. Limited edition. Limited edition. Wow. For the 1970s, that's quite a big head. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a bubble piece. Wow. Quite a big piece for the 1970s. But it actually fits my wrist perfectly. Pretty strange. Well, go they, ahead and buy it. They sized it just for you. They sized it just for me. Do you love it? Pull out the checkbook. So this is all vintage over. This is a... So where are the new pieces for our this year? Want want the new ones are in the um, front. I like front over there. That one and then the other one, the stainless steel version on the left. The entire Polaris line is here. Right. And this is the Polaris memo box based on this 1968 Polaris. This is the regular Polaris food. Yeah. Okay. The wow. Polaris class. Very nice. Good. How are you? Good. What is new for this year? Yeah. Actually, this was the first brand when I went to Switzerland when I was 18 that I came across. The first store that I had. Uh, Lake Missouri. Question. How is it Lake Missouri. Oh, I wow. was right. I was right. Thank you. In Switzerland, when I went there, they said it was Carl uh, Bouquier. But yeah, absolutely. That's, I, I was right, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. It's uh, great. You can get a German. Go take German now. I know. Swiss German, yeah. Swiss German. Yeah, okay. but I just wanted did, to did you, did you say it was pronounced French? No. The, um, when I was in Switzerland, I said, oh, how do you pronounce this brand? They said Bouquier. And I was like... Were you in the French-speaking part of the country? Uh, Lake Luzerne. On Lucerne. Right. So that, you ran into a French person. They could have been French. They said Bouquier, and I never forgot that. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, you know what? Call it something. Call it something. Call it something. I have to agree. What is new out for this year? Oh, what isn't new? I know. This tourbillon is new. Well, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a double the peripheral so just, uh, the color floating the strap tourbillon. Is changing, the global uh, and that's just a spring bar, so you can, you can change the strap out of it. It's actually the only floating tourbillon ever. You can, any you can get uh, all any strap. technology. Yeah. And we still all the light that you basically fix it. I mean, you can put something like this. You can take the brown. Yeah, you put it. 
reserve this, this power one, reserve this one was here 65 be hours for the black you can wear it on the weekend what's the uh, price of anything any color the price is only $68,000 in gold. I mean, literally, if you look at other terms of this and what it's got That's to insane. offer, it's half the price. That's insane. It actually is pretty cheap compared to the other ones we had so Take it. Put it on, Jared. Dave, can you, uh, Drew, you can hold that for How about that? I got that. Can you roll it? Wow. wow. That is just... That's amazing with the floating turbine. I've never, like, wow. That is pretty wild. Cool. With the, uh, just the attention to detail on the back of that. That's amazing. You can see right through it. Right, right through it, no problem. Okay. Okay. Most turbine carry days are at the bottom. Absolutely. Absolutely. The point of the eye goes to 12 with the luxury of the watch. Yeah, this is no. And then on the third arm of the cage, yeah. we made it in the second half because it's a 60 second. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, it goes oh, around once every minute. Yeah. And yeah. they all offerings in the. Uh, Very cool. Whether you're German, you're French, you're Swiss, or you're American, that brand's still cool. Yes. And. Oh no, we'll get there in a sec. Omega is next. So oh, ladies and gentlemen, is, um, as Dave just pointed out, yeah. it's time for Omega. Um, and then we have hello, hello, hello. Where do you begin and stop with Omega? Oh boy, James Bond goes on and on and on. My favorite collection that I have, the favorite watch in my collection, is the Omega. Constellation, and everybody knows I have the 8500 as well. I'm interested to see. There's the James Bond over there. If I zoom in, I can show you guys. There's the James Bond editions, and I'm interested to see if they have my constellations. They have revolutionized the industry many, many times over, and there they are. Absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. Boy, oh boy, it begins and it stops everywhere with Omega. Here, sorry, I will take my bag. I apologize, this one's heavy, I know. So, um, Drew, yes, we're, which uh, Omega are you going to be trying on? Well, that's a good question, Jared. My phone, my watch. There's so, so many. Oh, wait a minute. I know which watch you're going to try on. Am I? If you do. have it, which I doubt that they do. I don't see the 8500 here. Well, I'm going to ask a fan of a particular watch. Are you ready for this? Uh, okay, go ahead. Question. Yes. Don't know if you have it right now. Oh, you do. Where is it? This is the new oh, yeah. 300 uh, M uh, diver, correct? Yes, this is. All right, this is going on my wrist. Hold on to that, please. There he goes. Can I try that one on? Wait, which one are you interested in? Um, let's do this one right over here. I have got to try that. We didn't bring any cancellation to this. I know. We had it here last year. Uh, I, yeah, I was going to say. It's, it's, it's like literally the only watch on this one. That inspired me to get mine this year. Oh, oh, man. So lately, I know in the next Bond film, this will be the watch. I know that. It's not even a question at this point. Is that the DeVille? That's the DeVille. You know what? I'll try that one. I got to There's Jared with the James Bond. You know oh, look how in love he is. A lot more comfortable on the rest. When you, like, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's just so nice. It's still one. It's 120. Like, now, this is ceramic, correct? This is ceramic yeah. vessel and ceramic dial. Wow. I got to tell you, that's beautiful. What a, this is a nice piece. You know, you know, you know. Everyone's talking now between you know the battle with you know, Omega and Rolex. I almost like that better than the Submariner. You know, because I know uh, I just read recently that the dials laser engraved with the waves. So nice. Very very nice piece. Sorry, it's a newer. So Drew, which one are you going with? Try on the bill. Which one? Did? That one. Yep. Is it solid gold and rubber band? Uh, no, this is actually with you and... Here, can we, uh, just take this for a minute? Yeah. Uh, zoomed in. Uh, uh, guys, that is the new, uh, that's going to be the uh, James Bond watch next. That's the uh, Omega. There's the DeVille. 
So, okay. what's this one retail? That, that that reminds me of your constellation. A little bit. Here, Jay, take the camera for a This really reminds me of your constellation. Let me ask a question. Which one do you like better? Do you like this or your constellation? Uh, constellation. You do. Well, this is a very. But in terms of comfortability. Is this new? Is this new? The villa is one of their oldest. This style. Well, in terms of style. That's gorgeous. What's this, is this a 40 or 42? That's a, this is a 40. 40, 40 yeah. You can see from the corner. I love the color. The main difference is primarily that first one. It's definitely yeah. I love the gold. With these. Yeah, the gold it makes That's you pretty. feel rich. But the sapphire, That's a pretty. The sapphire What's the water resistance on this? This is a 100 meter. Uh, this is a 50 meter. 50. 50. 50 meters. So amazing. Yeah, I take it to the boutique. Nice piece. No, I'll tell you, what, what Omega's doing right now is amazing. Yeah, that's what, what's the price of this? Uh, this is going to be in an $8,000 range. $8,000 range because it's cold, I figured that. Yeah, cool. Remember, so man, now, wait, is it, is there, uh, it's a two-tone, right? Yeah, with the yep. bands, two-tone. Yeah, it's gorgeous, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. I gotta tell you, that's Seamaster, wow. Yep. Wow. All right, I'm back behind the camera. Oh, I think everybody knows Zenith. Yes. Oh, very familiar. Hey, you having a good time, Dave? I am having Fantastic. a blast. Fantastic. Let's take a look at what we got here. Oh, yeah. So, Jared. Say. What are these models that I'm, we are looking at? What, what? Tell the audience what we're looking at. Oh. We um, need new options for these. I don't even know the exact model. Uh, we may have him stumped. I feel bad about that, actually. Well, that's a chronograph right there. But these are new out for this year. Okay, this is their case they usually bring out, 2018. And absolutely gorgeous. You do have the metal strap on the left the and the rubber strap too. Yep, on the right. Pretty cool. Zenith's showing their 2018 collection to us today. I think the subdials make a watch unique. They do. It all depends where they're put on the watch and what they stand for. Try to get in here and see some of the different brands for this year for Zenith. They do have quite a collection out this year for us. Uh, yep. Yep. Do you see it? Yeah, that's the Zenith Defy Lab. That's what he's looking at. The Zenith Defy Lab, which is one of the most revolutionary pieces Zenith has come out for in Basel this year. I'm sure Jared's going to want to try it on his wrist if I know him well enough. Okay, Jared. So this is Here the is. Zenith Defy Lab. Actually, Dave, can you do me a favor and please uh, take this bag and the umbrella for me while I put this one on my wrist? Sure, I got it. Thank you so much. I take this one off for me. I want you guys to get uh, a video of this. This is uh, the Phi Lab on the wrist. And explain what makes it so revolutionary. Well, it's the, so, it's the silicone uh, that's inside of it that uh, bounds so frequently. 45 millimeter case size, but again, it's got an actual like 0.3 uh, seconds over 48 hours, and they're talking about having a power reserve, not only hours or days, but weeks on it. And um, I mean, I mean, this watch is just this watch is actually the real deal. You guys can see the back here. That's the Defy Lab. Brand new, recently, still a concept piece. I think they were going to make a uh, very limited edition of these, but hopefully they'll uh, come out with some more. But it's really just a beautiful piece, really, at the end of the day. You know, you can see it rotating and everything. Thank you. Wow. Pretty cool. I'm telling you, the watches we've had to try on our wrist today have absolutely been breathtaking. I mean, it really does. It's just so lightweight. It's comfortable. It really doesn't bump the wrist at all. It's also the proportions are just perfect. Uh, also, too, and I, and I, know, I just read a great article today from uh, Dinky yeah. about uh, yeah. Let's take a quick look at Grand Seiko over here. Again, I am not a big fan of Grand Seiko, um, but they are known for their accuracy. They are known for pretty good. Uh, retail value, if you do buy them, Seiko, as we know, is one of the biggest watch brands in the world. Grand Seiko is their uh, step up from their regular watch line, and they do charge quite a bit more. Bring the camera back over Hold on one sec. Say something about Grand Seiko while we're here. Yeah. And then we'll go right back over. Well, I want you to bring the camera back over here because I want to point something out to you. Okay, well, hold on. Just get, 
finish this first, and then okay. for the well, video's sake. Look how many people are around this uh, booth right now. Zoom out. Zoom out and go, like, up high. This brand, okay, just from the brand itself in the USA, this is how I wanted to start into Grand Seiko. This is one of the most hot, the hottest brands on the market right now. Very difficult to get in the United States, although they have released some uh, limited editions. Um, these ones in particular over here, um, these are the Grand Seiko Spring Drives. Now, what separates these from all other, other, all other automatic watches is the fact that they have a smooth sweeping seconds and they're vibrating around 36,000 vibrations per hour when the average is doing around 21.6 or 21.8. That's the reason why they're smooth sweeping second hands. Now, the other thing that they have in some of their uh, Grand Seiko spring drive lines is their uh, power reserve level. And they're not in these, but we may see them in other watches uh, going forward. This is one of the hottest brands in the world right now that's up and coming, rebranding itself, becoming its own brand, separating from Seiko. This is a luxury watch that's not only holding value, but garnering a lot of attention. Over to Mont Blanc. Uh, most of you guys know Mont Blanc for their pens, uh, but they're much more than a pen company, as you can see. It seems um, like they're a lot. They they really build their brand on innovation. Too. Well, Mont Blanc, as you can see, they, they build off their pen um, yeah, national quality. Yeah, because everybody knows them for their pens, and they're really introducing themselves to the watch world, and they have plenty of designs as well that show they're a very reputable. Uh, German watch company, um, even though they do partner with the Swiss as well with a lot of their movements and innovations. So Mont Blanc. Oh, here's a pretty one. Look at this one. Oh wow! Look at this one. They really go outside the realm of thinking with they their do. watches. Uh, that's a mixture of the 1920s and 1930s coming together right there with today's innovation to get everything on the calendar. But you can see, if I were to turn this around, ladies and gentlemen, that looks like a pocket watch, doesn't it? Yep, and here's that design, once again, flipped around. And they have them in a variety of different sizes uh, for unisex and for female as well, if they were so interested in buying Mont Blanc. So yeah, they do have quite a selection here this year. Um, and get over for you over here, yeah. yeah. We're taking a look. Absolutely. We're going to be around here somewhere, maybe in the next area or whatever. How we doing? Good. I was just informing you about Mont Blanc. Tell me about Mont Blanc. Now, most everybody knows Mont Blanc not for watches. They know him for pens. And their pen industry has really fueled them into the watch industry. Right, but as you can see, and this is true, um, there was actually a brand that I used to retail. I um, can't remember what it was, but it was a ripoff of Mont Blanc. I know it was nice, but very racing inspired. Absolutely. So they do a lot of different watch styles, a lot of different watch brands, a lot of different watch innovations, and they're here at the New York City Watch Show, again, uh, showing off what they have to offer. This is the oldest watch manufacturer. Well, yes. Where we end is actually where it began. Yeah. Actually, so how, that's how, actually kind how, of... How, how kind of funny is that? Yes, that's kind yeah. of uh, ironic in a way, as we look at one of the we're, oldest... We're, we're, we're actually going to take our time here for a minute, because we're actually a little early with stuff. Uh, we still got a little time left. We're also going to do a recap after this, guys. But, um, yeah, that's from Constantin. Take a look of what they have to offer in their 2018 line to the New York City Watch Expo over here. And you can see they do a variety of materials. Oh, they do gold, they do diamonds, they do see everything. See the blue one right there? The, uh, yeah. The overseas. Zoom in on that one that he's talking about. Yeah. This one actually just came out with the they, along with JLC, they have borrowed each other's technology and worked together for hundreds of years. Well, there's also another brand that most people overlook with the technology that's uh, used. Go try it. Zenith as well. But these two are known as sister companies. Vacheron, Constantine, and JLC. Yeah, the Vacheron overseas is the dial. That is a good Vacheron. Frequently work together. Ooh, that was gorgeous. That had a date. 
but boy, oh boy, talk about beautiful, beautiful pieces over here. Now, again, it's almost like the, um, you know, the, the Paddock Philippe by Nautilus, the Ashton Mon as well, the Tower Seas. These are some of their more uh, simplistic designs. How are you, sir? Good. Right, back to you. So, welcome to where it all began. Here, just uh, take that a little bit here because that's Let me move over here to see the rest of the line over here. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yo, boy, look at that one. Vacheron, yes. Vacheron and JLC, my friend. But take a look at this one, Jared. You want to see a diamond watch? Look at that one. Oh, that crap. But boy, what a piece. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right, right. I actually do too. But boy, oh, boy. Triple day calendar? Hello. Can I try that one? Certainly. What does that usually retail for? Fifteen thousand eight hundred. What's the uniqueness of this one? So this one is actually now a discontinued model. Oh, so, discontinued. Wow. Yeah, even though the blue dial came out last year, it has already been discontinued. So what's interesting is that the date wheel itself is fixed, and it's a white arrow that moves to indicate. Uh, I think it's like toward the top. The orange a little bit. Yeah, yeah that's true. Right? See that white Wondering arrow date. right there date. will move. The wandering date. They call. Yes. That's so cool. Oh, sorry. It's almost like the JLC's wait, mystery wait, do, dial. Wait, do me a favor. Just move your move it into the light a little bit more, because that is a go. stunning blue. Mm -hmm. That is nice. It has so much texture. Yeah. And the difference of finishing, it, it's really gorgeous. It catches the light so nicely. It's this side first. Yeah. Uh, He's oh, not used okay. to leather. No, I'm not used to leather. Nope. It's all steel with me. Okay. Yeah. How does it feel? Nice feel to it. Nice. I wish that, you know yes. me. I wish everything is in steel. Yes. 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 The the other watch after he's done is I wanted to try the uh, Vacheron overseas in the blue. Oh yes. Yeah. I really want to try that. You, which one? The time only. Uh yeah yeah the one uh, down there with the date. Okay. I was gonna say when you guys have a chance. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, here's Jerry trying on. Their more simplistic model. That is like butter on the wrist. And they're super comfortable. I mean, honestly, like butter on the wrist. Let's take a look at that. That is so nice. What's the size on this one? Well, I don't. They're all 40 and they're all 40. Right, it's a size. Perfect. Good size. Like, that can fit anyone's wrist with yeah. 40. And what's the uh, retail on this one? 19,400, I believe. It's the new 56 line over here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is just under this one. So easy to read. Yeah. So and that sector dial, I think, is beautiful to have that stepped texture. I know that's one of the things that's going to be good. And again, yes. one of not many here at the New York City. Really hope, actually, all well, of us really hope that you truly enjoyed what we did today. Um, very different perspective from last year. We tried on pieces. We never thought we'd try them brand new for this year and some vintage pieces as well. I'm going to just throw this out there and just. I had two favorite pieces, honestly. Um, the Bella Ross, Aero Naval, very, very nice piece. But the one that I just tried on, which I know Judy didn't get, but that's okay. The Vacheron Overseas uh, model with the blue dial with the It's very cool because they have a uh, quick strap change feature where you can just take off the metal band, put on the rubber band, and it looks fantastic. It's more resistant to, I think, it's like 150 meters, so you can go diving with it, do whatever. You can wear it at the beach during the day, dress it up with a tuxedo at night. Um, that was by far my favorite watch. I, I, just for me, too. How about you? I didn't really run across a favorite watch. No. Um, I, I thought the selection to be, I don't know if you want to call it critical range, I thought the selection last year was actually more expansive than it was this year. Um, especially with Omega. I did not see the display I saw last year where we saw a lot of speed matches yeah, and a lot of yeah, The display was really cut down. But, but the new Omega Seamaster 300 M Diver, that's going to be the next James Bond watch with the wave dial. Yep. If you look at what they were actually focusing on this year, it was more of intricate pieces on what's really hot in Basel. 
beautiful, and that's really what they brought here this year. Instead of their expansive lines, which we saw a lot more of last year. If you look at, I think Tag Heuer was here last year. There were a couple of brands that weren't here this year that were there last year, and they bought a huge selection. Um, you also had the one that Citizen just brought out. Um, Frederick Constant here last year. You had the other one that uh, you had a couple of big brands that just weren't here last year. I, I think what they're trying to do is they're really trying to you know have their own brands, you know, watch yourself fine. I think it's more about the editing of the brands this year. It's starting to be a big thing that we've done last year. Um, I, I was personally fairly impressed with the new watches at least like I mentioned that we've seen this year. A lot of great technology, a lot of good brands, uh, some unique designs. Um, you know, I think the watch world has come a long way in the last few yeah. years. And I think you're seeing the rise of the independent watch come back. Yeah, absolutely. You're really seeing, uh, and, and the designs of the independent watches are absolutely phenomenal. They're, they're, they're more unique. Expensive. They're more unique. Oh. I mean, you're looking brands, at some of these yeah, pieces. They're, they're done by hand. Oh, the ones that are done by hand with the yeah. submerged world turning. And, oh, I know. They're all I'll tell you, the watch I thought was most impressive yeah. was the one with the diamond coming out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one was. I thought that was fantastic. That was fantastic. That. Um, but there's no way we're going to mortgage our house. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it's only 130. Yeah, it's, but that was absolutely fantastic to watch him actually do that. I think that was really The other thing that we've seen a trend is the explosive, uh, the explosion of turbulence. Oh, yeah. And almost every other watch was a turbulence. Fine turbulence. There's double turbulence. There's triple turbulence. Yeah. And, you know, uh, everything. I mean, turbulence are okay, but I don't think that there's anything moving way in the industry that shows the accuracy of the territory. Yeah, I just, or actually, also, the other watch I do have to give a big shout out to Val Mercy, who's right behind us. It was one of his favorites on that. Yeah. You know, it was so they have a lot of good watches time. over there. Absolutely. Now, um, Bauman Mercy. I can't remember the question that I asked earlier that I wanted you guys to think about. What the difference between the independent brands? And oh, yeah, yeah. So, what, what do you think is the biggest difference between what you're seeing with the independent watch brands? versus the mainstream ones. Uh, I wanted to ask that question earlier. The independent watch brands are going with a lot of features. They're going with a lot of things that mainstream brands just give you the time, they give you one or two features. With independent watch brands, they're doing things in a whole different way. They're going high-end. If you look at independent, most of these brands are way high-end. I mean, you're not even looking at really affordable. That's the, that's the problem with the independent watch brands. They're limiting to everything 99 and under, or 99 pieces and under. Or they're custom making it to your likability. However, if you're in the fifteen to fifty thousand dollar range, most of these independent guys. So, so let's say you were gonna buy one one watch in particular. Which one would it be today? You mean if I could have any one? Uh, what was the one of the first ones we saw? Oh god, there's so many independent watch brands here I couldn't even. So, I go with the, I'm sorry, I have to go with the flower piece. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, because wow. my wife is love that. Uh, that to me I was just stunning how that thing opened up and closed. And then you had the diamond spinning around in the middle. I'm like, as, as much as, and I've seen the other ones before from the tech, you know, from the world and stuff like that when I went to the exhibit last year. I've never seen a, a piece go with a diamond around and then the, the flower goes. Yeah, it looked like a Venus flytrap. I mean, it was, it was, that was quite something. And for him to actually show us that was really cool. We just got his attention at the right time. So I thought that was one, and I wouldn't even be for me, it would be for my wife, and she'd never wear it anyway. But it wouldn't matter. It was really, really cool for our kids. But so, just, just great to be here now. I'm going to have uh, Dave get into uh, this video. Dave, go ahead, my man. Tell us your thoughts on the show this year. Um, I was very impressed with the show. I, I really had a good time, and... Uh, I agree with Drew. I think that the independent watch brands, um, they certainly have unique designs and they're a lot more innovative because they are custom made. But again, I think that the issue is the price point as well. They're just not affordable and I think that you can get an equally good brand um, with one of the more well-known brands. Uh, what was your favorite watch today, Dave? Uh, trying to think. I like the JJ Lacoute. JJ Lacoute. That was a good one. Of course. I, I am. You like the JJ I did. I thought the Zenith was very nice. Those watches, uh, the Bauman Mercier. So uh, there's a bunch. Well, guys, listen. Oh, I don't. Okay, so I just did a zoom in. So long. Let me come out here. So, guys, listen. I hope everyone enjoys this show. Hopefully, we gave everyone something to think about, something to see. Any questions that you guys have about any of these watches, don't hesitate to ask.
thank you guys so much for joining us from Watch Time New York 2018. And until next time, don't forget to also like, subscribe, uh, send us emails, comment below. It doesn't matter. And we're going to see you guys on the next episode of It's, it's About, about time. time. Perfect.